What's going on everybody? Welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here. What was supposed to be a cloud-filled evening has turned out to be a nice clear blue sky. So I am totally going to take advantage of this tonight. This is probably, not probably, this will be the last clear evening I'll have for the month of January. And with the moon coming back stronger, staying up longer, um, you know, I'm running out of good light. So anyway, tonight I'm going to be focusing on the Seagull Nebula. And um, hopefully I'll be able to get in about a good three or four hours with this target. This nebula lies uh, in the southward part of the sky, kind of south east, I guess, yeah, southeast of the Orion constellation, somewhat close to that area. Let's go take a look at Stellarium, frame this thing up and see what would be the best scope uh, combination for this target tonight. Alright, so let's take a look at Stellarium here to frame up our target for this evening. And if you have not used this program before, I have got a separate tutorial here that goes in pretty good detail on how to maximize this program for planning out sessions both down the road and maybe the one you're doing that evening, uh, framing up your target and all that good stuff. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at Seagull Nebula. I'm going to be starting at about 8 o'clock. So yeah, that should be good there. And it'll be in the south part of the sky. I know that. I believe it's IC2177. And there it is. Let's zoom on in. Awesome. Let's put on our little mask here. So that 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 right there frames up pretty good. Let's see, that was the that's the my camera, the Canon. I have 80D listed here, but it's the same specs as the 77D and the William Optic 71 with the reducer. I think that frames up pretty darn good. Gives me a little bit of room for stacking artifacts uh, to be cropped out. That, that should frame up perfectly. One thing I really like about this particular target is how nicely it fits in the field of view with the setup I have. Um, it should really come out with a real nice composition. Not to mention there's a lot of H-alpha data in this target, so um, should be able to come out, I'm thinking with five minute or, or less subframes at ISO 800. I'm going to do some test shots and see what comes out, but I'll, I'll be sure to put down what works best. That way you guys can uh, model after that and see if it works for you. But let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so I got the target in sight. Um, let's take a look at the histogram. This is done at, this is a 15 second sub, 25,600 ISO. And you can see it right there. I mean, that's pretty good, but let's see how this histogram looks. That's a little hot. That's a little hotter than I'd like. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dial that exposure down a little bit. I still think we're gonna get some good data, exposing that a little more to the left. But that's what the histogram looks like. And generally, I try to go about a quarter from the left, not quite a third. And this is almost a half, so this is definitely slightly over. So I'm gonna redo that and get that to where it needs to be and then i'll get phd set up and uh, have this imaging session up and going all right here it is again this time at 10 seconds instead of 15 let's see how that histogram looks now there we go that's what i'm looking for that should do so i'm going to base my exposure calculation off of that so essentially double it five times 
anyway, we're gonna be shooting this at ISO 800 and it looks like it's gonna be coming out to about something like two or three minute subs, we'll see. All right guys, so for tonight's session, after uh, taking the test subs, I decided to go with 320 second subs at ISO 800. And um, I came up with that number based off the test shot. What I do is I take a test shot at the highest ISO I can. In my case, it's 25,600. And I do like a 10 or 20 or 30 second subframe, depending on how faint I think the target is based on what I've heard or read about, right? In this case, I knew this one had, you know, it wasn't super faint. Um, similar to maybe like the Flaming Star Nebula or the Rosette, right? So I did a 15 second um, sub and that one came in too hot. Dropped it down to 10 and that one looked good, better on the histogram. And so the next thing I do then is once I find what looks good on screen on the histogram, I go ahead and then make the calculation needed. So if I'm at 25.6, I know that if I drop that to eight, that comes out to a 320 second subframe. So that's kind of my like mental game as far as how I come up with um, what's gonna be an appropriate subframe for my imaging plan, uh, for my imaging session. And, and um, you know, my target number, I'd like to get like 60 or more frames at a time, but you know, sometimes that's not always achievable. Like tonight, for instance, you know, clouds are supposed to be rolling in here in the next uh, two, two and a half hours. And with the dithering at 320 seconds, I'm probably gonna average about nine or 10 uh, subs an hour. So if I can get 40, I'll be happy with that, but probably be more like 35, 36 or so. But if I can get 40 frames, I think I'll, I'm gonna have something pretty nice here. So anyway, uh, Imaging's underway, about, I think, 15 or so subs in, and uh, everything's moving along pretty good here. Clouds are holding off, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm about 27 frames into the evening. Um, had to do a meridian flip here, and about to get things set back up. Gonna check focus again. That's usually my, my MO there. I recheck focus after a meridian flip it it's only dropped about two i think degrees but two or three degrees but just to be on the safe side i'm gonna go ahead and do that i'm gonna get everything lined up again with the seagull nebula and hopefully be able to squeeze out another 15 or so frames for the evening so with that we'll get started all right guys so the clouds are starting to creep in a little bit sooner than i thought um it's kind of spotty right now so it's kind of hit and miss. I think it's jacking up maybe some of my frames here and there, but I'm going to try and still see if I can squeeze out a few more, but I think I'm going to be closing up shop here a little bit earlier than I wanted to. But still, hey, I think I'll get away with about 30 frames, and uh, we'll calibrate them, get it stacked up, and uh, I'll do a separate tutorial on that because I'm going to go over Astral Pixel Processor for you guys so you can see how that works and how amazing, how, how much of an amazing job it does in processing images. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna do one last check here, see if I can squeeze another couple frames and I'm wrapping things up for the night.